Due to requests in the past, I'm going to show you how to make a shield or a buckler. Now this is more of an advanced build, so if you're a beginner and you have not built anything like this in the past, you may want to check out other tutorials first before you take on this task. The material is a little bit more expensive and a little bit more of a material commitment, but you find that if you can master this build, you can actually use it for a lot of things and you'll get a lot of mileage of the material as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a professional looking buckler or shield. Think of this as a Viking shield. It's round, um, it's pretty decorated. Um, this is where your creativity will shine. So this is what the front looks like and this is what the back looks like. Um, you have the strap and you have a, a PVC handle. So we're gonna go ahead and go over the materials just like we, what we always do, starting with our camp pad. This is, a, this is the Ozark Trail camping pad you can get from Walmart. Um, this is what we're gonna be using for our basic foam. Now you can experiment with other foams, there are many out there, but for now, in this build, we're gonna be using this one. So again, Ozark Trail camping pad you can get from Walmart. Next, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our glue. The glue that we'll be using today is DAP Contact Cement. Now this comes in two varieties. There's the green can and the red can. Do not use the green can because it dries too slowly. What you want to do is you want to get the red can. And you can get this from a lot of uh, hardware stores. Ace, Lowe's, they may all carry it. Um, but again, this is Wellwood DAP Contact Cement. Comes in a red can, dries a lot quicker. Then we're going to have our double-sided carpet, carpet tape. You can get this from Walmart. This is a very good tape um, for a lot of different occasions where you might not want to use DAP. So we'll be using this quite a lot in the first portion of our build. Uh, of course, uh, don't forget about duct tape. We'll need that. And uh, the two things that we're going to need for a later part of the build uh, is Plasti Dip. Okay, Plasti Dip, you can get this at also hardware stores. This is what will allow you to coat your shield and paint on it okay this is uh the black version you can get this any colors because you're just going to really paint over it so you want to get the plasti dip then the other one that's a little bit harder to get clear plasti dip which you can get from ace website um, you have to ask around to see if your hardware store carries it this is the clear kind so a lot similar to the black but it has no color which means you can uh actually use it to seal off all of your colors after you paint it. Um, there are other materials that will come up as, they, uh, as we need them. I'll bring them up at the later time. You also want to get a bottle of varnish, which I don't have with me right now, but the varnish will help you seal everything in once you're done. That will come up later. Okay, so But for now, worry about just these materials and we'll get started. So to get started on this project, uh, we're going to cut out several strips of these long strips of foam um, with 1.5 as the thickness. I'll tell you why we'll need to cut these strips out uh, in the next part, but for now I've started with the fresh sheet of foam, as you can see, and I've drew a long line down the entire length of the foam that is 1.5 inches wide. This is very important. When you cut this strip out, you need to make sure that it is straight as you can, and it needs to be 1.5. You can have it a little bit uh, thicker if you want, but for now we're gonna use 1.5 as a number. You can see that uh, on the ruler here is pretty much 1.5. The way that I draw straight lines is I will make a few dots down the road, that are down the row with my ruler, and I basically connect the dots. So. We're going to go ahead and go down that entire sheet of foam, but for now we're going to start with two or three strips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. Okay, so I have a strip of foam cut out like this. Um, I'm actually shaved off an angle on one end there, so uh, it will fold easier. So, alright, you're probably wondering, why all the strips? I thought we are making a round shield. Why aren't we just cutting out round shapes and gluing it together and then call it a day? This is actually a different way of making a round shield. This way of making a shield actually gives you a little bit more control as far as how big you want the shield to go. 
Uh, we're going to take this strip of foam and roll it on itself like this. This will form a very strong shield, much stronger, I think, than just simply putting layers and layers of foam on, touch, on top of each other. A second reason for doing this is that this gives you greater control as far as the size of your, your shield and buckler. Let's say you cut out five layers of the foam already that you're going to stack on top of each other and then you realized, oh, I meant to have a bigger shield or this shield is too big. I need to change the size. By then you've already cut out the foam, you probably already glued a few together and you would have wasted a lot of foam. This way, if the shield is too big or small, you simply just take out more strips or add on more strips. So right now I have a spiral, sh the beginning of a spiral shield. Uh, it's not glued or anything yet, so we'll be doing that next. But let's say I want to make this bigger. You will just take another strip of foam and you simply continue rolling it on top of each other like so. This is actually quite strong once you get it all taped up or glued. This is actually quite strong because all of the foam is helping each other, helping each other out. So this is with two strips and it's already fairly large, fairly good size. Uh, do like five strips, just wrap it around itself, figure out the shape and the size of the shield that you want. All right, so to tape the strips together, uh, we're going to use the double-sided carpet tape. We could dap and glue the strips, but it would actually take a little bit too long because there's a lot of strips and there's a lot that needs to be done. So what we're doing is just simply using carpet tape to glue, or not glue, but tape it together. And if you never used double-sided tape before, it's actually very simple. What you're doing is you're taping it to the surface, and you're actually ripping off one side of the tape. Now, depending on the tape that you got, chances are the tape will actually be thicker than the foam itself. Um, instead of worrying about cutting the tape, what I'm doing is I'm basically just going to fold the tape on top of itself. That way you get an even stronger bond. All right, so I'm ripping off one side of the tape. Okay, and now I am folding. Now I am folding the tape on itself. Okay, so finally the side is ready. What we're going to do is, like I showed you, we're going to roll it on top of itself into a shield. If your cuts are pretty straight, then it'll look fine. Otherwise, at least try to match up one edge of the shield. So now I am putting on my second strip. It has double-sided tape on it already. And again, what I'm doing is I'm basically matching up one edge. So one question that you may have is why not use plywood? Why not have a wooden core um, instead of using the spiral method? That's a good question. Uh, you can add a plywood core if you would like. Um, I don't because I don't want to have to cut up wood if I don't have the hard tool, the, the power tools for that. Um, it might be pretty difficult to cut wood without a saw. 
so that's the reason why I don't have it. And also, I tend to believe that a shield without a wooden core is safer. And again, I mean, I've used this build before and it seems just as strong um, depending on how many layers you eventually stack on top of it. So for now, this is two layers of, or two strips of the foam, I should say. Uh, start with five. See, get to the size that you want, see how big you need it, and then cut out more strips. Okay, while you're cutting out your strips of foam and taping them together, you may want to get started on a side project. Uh, you won't know what this is for until later, but believe me, this is very important. What we're going to do is we're going to first cut out eight pieces of this rectangular piece. It is two inches by three inches. We're going to cut eight of them out and we're going to glue two sets of them together. So we're going to go ahead and glue them like this and we're going to go ahead and glue them like this with that. If you never used that before, the way the glue works is not like any other glue that you've used. To glue two pieces together, for example, if I want to glue both of these two pieces together, I need to go ahead and put DAP on both of these sides. So I need to put DAP here, and I need to put DAP here. And the way this works is you'll have to let the surfaces sit for at least 20 minutes, 20 minutes to 30 minutes, just let it sit for the DAP itself to dry. And the way that you can tell if DAP is dry is you can touch the surface and if you do not get DAP on your hands, that means it's ready. So again, what we're doing is we're gluing two sets of these eight pieces together that we cut out that are two by three. Again, this will seem a little bit strange why we're doing this now, but later on, you'll understand why it's important to get started early. By getting started on it early, you'll have time for these pieces to dry for a later part of the project. That will save you some time down the road. So again, eight of these pieces, and we're gonna glue two sets of them together. Another piece that you'll see me gluing is this piece right here. Um, the dimension of this piece is not so important. I basically just cut out three of these identical pieces, uh, make them about three inches, and about six inches long, um, what you want to do is you want to actually glue three of them together to form a, a nice thick piece. Um, again, it might seem a little confusing right now, but you'll understand what it is for later. So again, to use a dap, you want to put dap on both of the pieces, let it sit, let it dry for about 20 minutes. Then afterwards, you want to go ahead and glue them together. I can see that it's, been, that it's dry because I touched the surface and it's not on my fingers. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue two of these little pieces together. We're going to glue two of those little pieces together. Okay, so these are done. We're going to put them away, weight them down with a paperweight or something. Just put them away. We'll be using them at a later part in this tutorial. As far as these two bigger pieces go, we'll go ahead and glue the two together. Uh, we're not quite done with these two yet because there's still one more piece that needs to be glued. So we're gonna go ahead and put glue on both sides, like so. And we're gonna wait 20 minutes and then glue it together so we'll have three pieces in a row. And then after you do that, we'll put it aside again to the next part of the tutorial.